This one has been flying under my radar for a little while. The game is Stranded Alien Dawn. Been in early access for a while, but yesterday got its full release. Now the game is a survival game of sorts. Really interesting, actually. Uh, surprisingly good. I've been playing it for a few hours today, mainly just the tutorials. But nonetheless, a really strong indicator as to where the game is heading. So as you can see over on Steam, the reviews are very positive. These are the recent ones. The game is being developed by Hemimont Games and is published by Frontier. That's uh, Frontier Foundry, the, th the publishing arm, the third party publishing arm of Frontier Development. So uh, the price of the game is £30, which I feel is pretty good value for what you get. Although, full disclosure here, I did request the Steam key from Frontier and they were kind enough to send it over. So, like I say, the game itself is a survival game, but it's also a builder with uh, some strategy elements built in as well. And if you're familiar with games such as RimWorld, you're going to be right at home with this. However, I think it's unfair to make a direct comparison with something like RimWorld, because this is certainly very much its own thing. Now, I do want to be very clear here. Again, as with most of my videos, this is not a full review or anything like that and shouldn't be taken as such. Instead, it's an impressions of first impressions just with me jumping in and seeing what it's all about. But I will admit that this game has taken me completely by surprise. I wasn't actually expecting it to be as good as it is. Now, as you can see, I've started off here in a drop pod. The goal is to basically set up a facility, a, a business empire that will make as much money as possible. But that's just one of multiple different goals that you can start with. For example, you can start as survivors of a crashed ship. You can see there, the ship crashed in the middle. The objective here is, well, to basically survive. And in another scenario, you'll find yourself starting off at having to defend yourself against a massive onslaught of hostile creatures. In short then, you can start off your game in a multitude of different ways. Further, you can customize your game to make it as hard or as difficult as you like. This means that you can start off with limited resources or an abundance of resources. You can make your characters very weak or slightly stronger, or you can even overpower them, just depending on really how you want to play the game. Now for me, with this type of game, I'm not really into this whole survival aspect. I don't like my characters being starving and have to worry about their thirst and hunger stats every five minutes. Instead, I like a nice, peaceful, tranquil game where I can slowly, over time, build up my base and gather other resources. The good news is that Stranded Alien Dawn caters to both playstyles as well as pretty much everything in between. It just comes down to uh, what type of settings you want to choose when you start your game off. So for me, in this particular case, I've gone for a nice, chilled, relaxed experience with uh, quite a few res resources to start out with. My objective, as I say, is to make as much money as possible. So to build up a well, potentially a tourist attraction, I guess, out here on this alien world. Now, talking of alien worlds, the game does offer a number of different environments to start with, from this beautiful oasis-like world to some harsh desert worlds as well. As I'm panning around here, you can see there's plenty of fauna and flora. This stuff can act as very basic resources, such as wood for crafting materials, but you'll also find far more advanced material laying around as well. Turns out it's very important to pay attention to your environment because some of these resources there are very important. You will need to research them, observe them. That can be both the flora as well as the fauna. We can see some animals up there towards the top of the screen. Now you'll also notice that the game does have a lot of depth to it. We've got a good research tree here with a whole load of other options which will expand your capabilities within the game itself. Down here, you can see the tall grass. We're going to observe this. This kind of happens in real time. One of your characters will get assigned to the task. We're going to send another one over there to observe the uh, bright leaf as well. So observing does take a fair amount of time. Meanwhile, we've got our animal training research going on. And towards the top of the screen there, we do have those rather large horned looking animals. As far as I can tell, they are relatively peaceful although some of these are bleeding out because they have been attacked by some other animals in the region. But I'm going to go and observe them in just a bit and later we'll see perhaps about training them or uh, taming them. 
In fact, before I did that, I had to get rid of these other creatures, which just kept attacking the poor horned animals. So these are some type of uh, bird creature, very aggressive towards the other animals. You can see they've killed a few of them, perhaps. So I've got a sniper weapon here with which I can take out these birds at a distance, not causing me too much trouble. Again, this really does depend upon the stats and your start requirements. You could equally have started out where these would pose a pretty much a hefty problem for you, and you might have discovered you'd have to fight them with a handcrafted spear or even with hand-to-hand -hand combat. And talking of combat, here's a small clip from one of the early tutorials where you have to learn to defend your base from an onslaught of some oversized beetles. Now, what's interesting here is that, by and large, day to day, your characters are autonomous. Request a building to be made, and a character will automatically be assigned to the task of constructing, uh, constructing that building. However, when it comes to combat, you do have to take direct control of those characters. Draft them into combat, and then select a character and choose which character enemy you want to target. So this really does keep combat engaging and entertaining as well. And as far as I can see, that seems true of all the early sections of the game. What you get out is very reflective of the type of effort that you put in. And the same I feel has, is true for the game itself. The developers seem to be very passionate about this game. They put a lot of love and attention into it and crafted something that appears to work very well. The only downside, really as far as I can see, is that the game hasn't got all that much attention yet. It's a shame, because it really does feel as though it deserves a lot of attention. But that said, this could simply be down to a lack of marketing from Frontier Foundry. In either regards, this is definitely a game where I feel I've barely scratched the surface. It feels as though their game is going to have a lot of depth to it. The thing is, I do play a lot of different games, and many of them I find unappealing and just for various reasons can't get into. Every so often though, a game comes along where as soon as I start playing it, I find it immediately appealing. I just want to spend a whole load of time with it. It seems that Stranded Alien Dawn is going to be one such game. So yeah, initial impressions is that this one has impressed me already. Beyond that, however, I haven't been able to find out any information on whether or not the game is going to get further content updates and further support now that it has been released from early access. Not that it needs any additional content just yet, as there's certainly plenty to be getting on with, but it'd be nice to know what, if any, the future holds for this game. At any rate, certainly one to try out. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.